provide. He'll provide. Brother Madison, he will provide. God will provide. The two of them then started on the way. And when they came to a place which God had told them, Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And then he did something very strange, probably Isaac. He bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Now, Abraham is a man of probably 116, 17 years old. Isaac is a young man of about 17 years old. And what you see here is the ultimate obedience on the part of Isaac. Just as God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son and Jesus came down through those generations of time in perfect obedience and allowed himself to go to an old rugged cross in perfect obedience. Here, Isaac, in perfect obedience, yeah, lets his father bind him. Any of y'all try to catch a 16 or 17-year-old boy lately when he running? Tell us about it, Coach Samples. 16, 17-year-old boy is at his peak of his youth. He can run. Some of them run miles. And then not only can they run, they can run fast. And for sure, a 116 and 17 year old man can't catch him. Yeah, but we see perfect obedience coming from Isaac. He let his daddy bind him, let him then take him and lay him on the wood. Now, I, I don't see Abraham picking up Isaac and laying him on the wood. I see him leading him over to the wood, over to the wood, just as Jesus was laid up Calvary. Yeah. And I see Isaac taking one leg, swinging it over. The other leg, swinging it over. Laying down on the wood. In perfect obedience. Then it says, Abraham, just like the Father in heaven, in perfect obedience to what needed to be done that the sins of the world would be taken away, then raises his knife. Isaac on the wood, Abraham standing over him, raises the knife. Look at what it says. It says, and Abraham stretched out his knife in verse 10, stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. I see God standing looking as Jesus was laid down on the cross, put the nails in his hands, put the nails in his feet, stretched him wide. I see God letting them See, God could have just thought the thought. And everybody who had a hammer in their hand and a nail in their hand could have just fell dead right there on the spot. But God let them place the nail right in the hand of Jesus. And they came down on one hand and down on the other hand and down on his feet. A perfect sacrifice. See, the problem with Isaac was he was not a perfect sacrifice. He was just symbolic of what God was going to really do for all mankind. And God had to show Father Abraham and the rest of the world the importance of having faith in him and being obedient to him and loving him and being committed to him and being willing to sacrifice for him. Yeah. When Abraham had showed his perfect faith, Something none of us would have really done. I'd have been telling the Lord all day long, Lord, I ain't doing it. I, ain't, I, can't, I can't slay my baby. Especially I done waited, you know, all these years to get him. 
I done waited 40 years. You promised, Lord, I ain't going to do it. You better find somebody else. Y'all know what I'm saying. See, see, because it was all a faith walk. It was all a test walk. But Abraham knew if he gave him to him at 100 years old, he could give him another one at 200 years old. Abraham understood the walk of faith. See, that's what you got to understand. The more you live by faith, the greater your faith is. Those who walk by faith will live by faith. And then God will justify your faith in him. The greater your faith, the greater your blessing, the greater your blessing the greater your faith it's just something about it the two go hand in hand and you got to understand the greater your test is the greater God blesses you in your life well let me finish it out and it says in verse 11 and the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, wherever you see capital A like that and capital L, it always represents who Jesus was. Jesus called out and Jesus said, Isaac ain't the one, I'm the real one. <laughs> Jesus called out and said, Isaac won't be the perfect sacrifice. I'm the real perfect sacrifice. And, and it said, the angel of the Lord called from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And so he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad. Do anything to him for now. Now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, amen, your only son from me. You know, that's a great statement. He said, don't touch the boy. I know you got faith now. I know you're trusting in me. Do not touch him. And then in verse 13 it says, And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram, the perfect ram. Here was the ram, the unblemished ram. He was caught in the thickest by his horns. Now, I always believe God magically put the ram there because I'm sure when Abraham bound Isaac, he looked around to see if God hadn't done something special. Like already putting a, a ram out there, a lamb out there. He looked around and there wasn't a lamb nowhere around, no, no ram anywhere around. And then all of a sudden the angel said, look, there's a ram caught in the thicket. And Abraham looked around and said, yeah, there's the ram caught in the thicket. Get off of that altar, Isaac, and let's go get this lamb. He unbound him and he took him and he said, we got a lamb now. Took that lamb and slew his throat, put him on the altar and burned him up. But one day God said, yeah, we got the perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world and his name is Jesus. Took him to an old rugged cross and stretched him wide and hung him high and he took away all the sins of the world. Your sins and my sins for all eternity. You know you got to understand. 